Hi guys, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff. I'm so glad you could join me for this warts and all opinion video. Aperture's F7 is an extremely compact but powerful variable color temperature LED light panel that's been designed primarily as a sort of run and gun on camera light. However, after using it and falling a little bit in love with it, I just think it's a super versatile, absolute no brainer, must have, buy it now, piece of kit for videography and photography. And here's why. All those times you made me the F7 is an LED panel that has 256 high color rendition index LEDs with a maximum output of 14,000 lux, which is very bright by the way. But the cooler thing that caught my attention is that the F7 has a ridiculously low minimum output of 8 lux which means that there's a difference of 8.3 stops between the lowest and highest settings. 8.3! <laughs> Lux, by the way, if you're not sure, is a measurement of the intensity of light as perceived by the human eye. And daylight is measured at 10,752 Lux, so the F7 is brighter than daylight? The F7 has a beam angle of 45 degrees, which makes it fairly versatile. It's neither a spot or a floodlight. The F7, as I mentioned, is a variable color temperature light ranging from 3200 to 9500K. In terms of power options, you can power it from your DTAP or with the super common Sony MPF batteries. It will also take power from a USB-C source. It only weighs 260 grams, so it's pretty lightweight on its own. What's really gonna push the weight up is if you start using it with the large NPF batteries. For diffusion, it comes with a slot in diffuser, which is handy if you need to keep your video set up small and light. But personally, I prefer much more diffusion than this. Let me show you. Here I'm using the F7 as my key light with no diffusion. Now I'm using the slot in diffuser. And finally, I'm using the F7 in combination with an umbrella. The most telling thing here about the quality of the diffusion is of course the shadows on her face, but actually more so, just check out the shadow behind her. This is of course with no diffusion. When we switch to the slot in diffuser, and then finally with the umbrella, and it's a surprising difference. I really like the one with the umbrella the most, obviously because that's the most soft and flattering. Now let's take a quick look inside the box and show you what you actually get for your money. In terms of accessories, it comes with a nice case, the aforementioned slot-in diffuser, there's actually two different grades, an amazing chunky ball head for mounting the F7 on your camera or on a stand, and of course the USB cable. But how's the build quality? The F7 has a plastic construction, but that is to be expected, and it's actually one of the main reasons it's so light. I would say though it does feel really sturdy, particularly with the super tough feeling front panel. The front actually feels really protected from any kind of impact or scuffs. I do like the dial on the side which controls the brightness and when you click it in, switches to the colour temperature control. So that's dual concentric, you tell me. Just a clever design that minimises the amount of uh, buttons on the actual unit itself. So overall I'm really impressed with how it's built. It's well constructed, lightweight, has a super tough front panel, and of course it comes with that excellent ball head. The only thing I have issue with is that it doesn't come with a Sony MPF battery. I know they're really common batteries, but still, it may have been nice. Now, let me show you what it can do. Okay, here we are, we've got the EOS R 10 to 18, so we're at F5, and I've got the F7 on top of my uh, Canon EOS R. So let's just, yeah, obviously you can't see me, but I've got the fairy lights on the background and let's just turn it on. That's 1%. I'm just gonna go all the way up. I'm shooting in C-Log, by the way. I'm gonna add a grade later. And that is on 100% at 56 Kelvin daylight mode. Pretty bright, I'm, I'm kind of struggling not to squint. When you look at Aperture's website about this light, they have images of guys with the F7 mounted on top of their cinema cameras, so they obviously have this kind of use in mind. And I have no doubt it would be perfect for it, but I also love this light mounted on a stand in combination with an umbrella or other kind of diffusion for a really diffused look. 
I just think it's so much light for your money that it would be just a no-brainer choice for beginners that need a proper LED panel and even all the way up to pro video work for on-camera lighting or even accent lighting. Anyway, now for the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly, the light quality is quite excellent. It has a CRI rating of 95 plus, which is impressive for a small affordable LED panel. If you're not familiar with CRI, it stands for Color Rendition Index and a score of 95 plus is very good, meaning it gives you high quality accurate light. Secondly, I was amazed by the extreme 8.3 stop range in brightness the F7 has. I mean, you've really got to see it to believe it. I also really like that it's compact and fairly lightweight. Obviously, this massively depends on the power source you're using. A large sized Sony MPF battery, for example, would, I mean, it could nearly double its weight. I was impressed by the wide range of color temperatures available and the dual purpose dial used for controlling it and also the brightness. Just very nice combining two controls into one. You also get a good range of power options, as I mentioned before. It just makes the F7 more convenient. And lastly, the price, which I've put into the pros, because I believe the F7 delivers outstanding value. You can check the price in the, in the description section of this video, but the last time I checked, it was around £100 UK, and should be around the same in dollars and euros. But what about the cons? Well, it's it's gonna be a short list, but I'd say it's slightly plasticky, as these things tend to be, but still well built. I'd also say that it would have been nice if a battery had been included, but I want to emphasize just how much this is not a deal breaker. <laughs> I reckon most video guys have at least a few of the Sony MPF batteries lying around. Finally, it would have been great if there were other options for better diffusion. I'm just thinking of the add-on diffuser you can get for the Aperture Amaran LED panels. Of course you can always use a host of other solutions for diffusion, so it's definitely not a biggie either. And my opinion, as you can probably tell from my praise, I'm quite smitten with the F7 and at this point I should probably just clarify that this is not a sponsored video or anything and if I thought the F7 was a pile of poop then you'd know by now. So, I really like the F7. It's pretty small but tough, it performs brilliantly, has good power options, and I'd consider it good value, but of course, do check the prices. And that's it for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and the one below is my latest upload, so do check that one out too. Definitely hit the blob on this side to subscribe. That would make me really happy and um, love you forever. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys.